I started with the question of what is optimum memory and went down the rabbit hole that not only gave me that answer, but the bigger question of what is Intel Optane? It is Intel's brand name for the products that use 3D crosspoint technology developed by Intel and Micron Technology. Micron Technology's brand name is Quandex. 3D crosspoint works differently from NAND in that it changes the physical resistance of the material instead of holding a charge. This means that 3D crosspoint should not experience bit rot. Modern NAND devices refresh old data every once in a while as the best quality NAND is only guaranteed to hold the charge for up to two years. Also, with 3D Crosspoint, you can write to any bit at any time. NAND you can write to any bit, but to change information, you have to erase a block at a time. A block in a NAND solid state drive is generally 256 kilobytes to 4 megabytes. This gives 3D Crosspoint a theoretical 2.4 to 3 times the write speed of normal flash solid state drives. I say theoretical because currently released consumer Optane memory products show slightly lower write performance than high performance NAND devices. 3D Crosspoint does have less latency than NAND and especially DRAM. 3D Crosspoint's Q depth is 1 to 5. Most NAND devices have a Q depth of at least 8, and DDR4 DRAM is generally about 32. Q depth affects the time between when you issue a write or read data command and when the action completes. Lower is better. Let's talk about products. Optane memory. Optane drives. Optane RAM. I started this video because I had the question, what is Optane memory? According to Intel, it's revolutionary. The first all new class of memory in 25 years, Intel Optane Memory creates a bridge between DRAM and storage to deliver an intelligent, amazingly responsive computing experience. Overall system performance is up to 28% faster. Increased system performance for hard drive access up to 14 times faster. Improve everyday task responsiveness by two times. What does that all really mean? Basically, Intel Optane Memory is an M.2 solid state drive using 3D crosspoint memory. It comes in either 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabyte sizes. So is this a storage device? Yes and no. It's not meant to be used as a drive, thus why they call it Optane Memory. It is used as a cache drive. Basically, commonly used files from your normal hard drive get copied to this really fast drive for faster boot and program load times. Files always remain on your main drive. Hasn't this technology been around for a long time? Yes and no again. Intel has had smart response technology for some time. This is using a solid state drive as a cache drive to speed up a hard disk drive. My main computer has two 2 terabyte hard drives in a mirrored RAID with a cache solid state drive. What does that mean? I have two 2 terabyte hard drives that are always exact copies of each other. If one fails, the other drive maintains all of my data. A solid state drive cache makes boot times and program startup close to solid state drive performance. On my main system, my boot time in Windows 7 was reduced from about 40 seconds to about 5 seconds. What makes Optane memory different from what I have? First, Optane Memory is an advancement of smart response technology where the CPU can better directly tell the cache drive what is being used most. Plus, it cuts out the use of third-party drives or AMD using this technology. It is also only usable on your boot drive, unlike smart response technology. Second, it is using an M.2 interface, which is much faster than the typical SATA interface used for most hard disk drives and solid state drives. This is why Intel says that Optane will speed up normal spinning hard drives the most, but will also speed up SATA-based solid state drives. For reference, SATA has a maximum theoretical throughput of 600 megabytes a second, which comes down to about 550 megabytes a second after the overhead is accounted for. M.2 has a maximum theoretical th throughput of 4 gigabytes a second, which comes down to about 3.9 gigabytes a second after the overhead is accounted for. What do I need to use it? This is where things kind of fall apart. You need a 7th generation Intel Core processor or higher. You also need a motherboard with an Intel Z270 chipset or latest generation equivalent. Why would I want to use this? 
Solid state drives are still quite expensive. A Western Digital Blue one terabyte solid state drive will run about $400 Canadian. A two terabyte solid state drive starts at about $800. If you want a Western Digital Blue one terabyte hard drive, it will only cost you about $70 Canadian. For $315 Canadian, you can pick up a six terabyte Western Digital Blue drive. If you want a faster Western Digital Black six terabyte drive, it will only cost you $386 Canadian. Six times storage space at just a little bit cheaper or three times the storage space at less than half the cost. Main usage for Optane memory would be getting solid state drive like speed with spinning hard drive prices. Though you need to add $60 to $100 extra for the 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte Optane memory chip. Why not use a normal solid state drive as a cache drive like I do? I'm guessing that the reason you have to use a 7th generation Intel processor is because of how the CPU informs the Optane memory on what is being used most. Also, the Optane memory is 2.4 to 3 times the speed of a normal solid state drive. That being said, you can buy a 128GB M.2 drive for about $88, then have a 64GB cache drive. Show me the numbers. When I run a speed test on my D drive, which is a mirrored RAID of two hard disk drives, I get 107 megabytes a second read time. For a similar drive not in mirrored RAID, a third party gets 86.5 megabytes a second. A test on my solid state drive that uses my cache drive, I get a read speed of 525 megabytes a second. Third party tests of 32 gigabytes of Intel Optane memory show a 1.2 gigabytes a second read speed. Would I recommend it? No. In reality, if you're spending money on equipment that supports Optane memory, you probably are going to be buying an M.2 drive and a large hard disk drive for data storage. Since Optane cannot be used for the secondary drive and it can't be used on existing systems, this product doesn't serve much use. Intel Optane Drives These are your typical hard drives, but not in the normal form factor. The first of these have already been delivered in the form of the Optane DC P4800X. It might be noted that this is meant for enterprise customers as this costs $1,520 USD. It also has a peak read speed of 5 gigabytes a second, though with the practical maximum of 3.9 gigabytes a second on the interface, I don't see this drive being used at peak speed but it's probably the fastest non-volatile drive in the market. It also just stores 375 gigabytes of data. 750 gigabyte and 1.5 terabyte models are expected later this year. You may notice that this is an add-on card or a U.2 drive instead of your normal SATA or M.2 connector. Both of these forms have the benefit of being able to put multiple drives in one box. Due to M.2's lack of packaging and a thicker connector, it is limited to one to two per motherboard. The other problem with M.2 is 3D cross-point storage gets quite hot. Intel is planning to release M.2 Optane drives in the future, but they haven't solved the heat problem yet. Enter in the U.2 connector and its form factor. Very similar to current two and a half inch drives, this connector gives the same speed as M.2 and adding cards. Apparently, these already existed on some enterprise servers, but I had never heard of it until doing research into Optane. You can get this connector on a normal computer by using an M.2 riser card or an add-on card. Well, I can't afford that. How do I get the speed? At CitizenCon this year, the game Star Citizen's yearly convention, Intel is expected to be releasing the Optane 900P drives. Like the Optane DC P4800X, these drives will mostly be cards that go into add-on PCI 3.0 four-lane slots. They will come in 280GB and 480GB models. 750GB and 1.5TB models are expected later. Prices are to be released probably at that event. We do know that these are designed to have a read speed of 2.5GB a second and a write speed of 2GB a second. 
impressive numbers if they are true, take into account that Optane memory is said to have a 1.4 gigabyte a second read speed and actual hardware only shows 1.2 gigabyte a second read speed. Though still it should outperform any current NAND solid state drives. Going forward, Intel Optane should just continue to get faster as they figure out how to optimize the technology more and how to deal with the heat issue. As it is, niche enterprise customers are already using the Optane DC P4800X as a form of extra RAM where more RAM is more important than pure speed. Intel Optane RAM They say the holy grail for storage is when RAM and storage are the same thing. In the past we did see this with Palm devices, though Palm OS still split the memory between storage and running memory. Ideally, this would be when non-volatile memory reaches the same speed as volatile memory. DDR4 3200 MHz has been tested at 48 GB a second read speed. If you were to put 3D crosspoint technology into a memory slot, you probably could get the full 5 GB a second read performance. That is exactly what Intel has done, introducing 512 GB of Intel Optane RAM and a DDR4 memory interface. Yes, this is real hardware. No, you have no need of it. This caters to the companies always using Optane drives as RAM or those that need really large RAM pools that don't have to run as fast as normal RAM. This works in a DIMM slot because it's perpendicular to the motherboard instead of parallel to it like M.2. The heat can be piped up to the top and expelled away from the motherboard. What good is Optane RAM to me? This gives Intel a platform to do research and development and recuperate some of their research costs. In the future, this could mean cheaper, non-volatile RAM for us, or maybe not making a distinction between RAM and storage. Personally, I am excited about this new technology, but also skeptical. Does anybody remember RD RAM, or as it was commonly called, Rambus? I would like to thank Linus Stuart Bolt for his three videos that helped me initially understand what Optane memory was and Intel for their no numerous white papers that filled in most of the rest of the information. Links to some of my sources in the description down below.